WTC Machinery, a global leader in designing and building machinery and tooling for heavy equipment repair facilities, is pleased to provide you with this DVD. This DVD covers installing, using, and maintaining the WTC Machinery WTC 385 track press. The WTC 385 track press disassembles and assembles the track chain used on bulldozers, excavators, and other tracked equipment. Using the track press to rotate worn pins and bushings extends the life of the track chain at low cost. Along with the PLD pad lift system, MT-10,000 torque wrench, salt lubricator, and CG4 grouser bar rebuilder sold separately, the WTC 385 track press is part of a complete track chain repair system. Each unique system from WTC uses tools, sold separately, specifically designed for different makes and models of crawler track. It is important to use the proper tools, and to use them correctly, when servicing track. Contact WTC Machinery for tool catalogs and for help selecting and using the tools. This section of the video manual covers the installation of the WTC 385 track press. Use care in locating your new track press. The recommended site for the track press is well lit and protected from the elements. With a 6 inch, 150 millimeter minimum reinforced concrete floor under the track press and a 4 inch, 100 millimeter minimum reinforced concrete floor under the index table and conveyor system. A lifting device usually a bridge crane or a jib crane, over the track press makes handling tooling and track chain parts easier. Allow for walkways on all sides of the press for a safe work environment and easy maintenance. See the accompanying floor plan drawing for dimensions. Installing the WTC 385 HF track press requires a few major tools and supplies. A lifting device rated for 15,000 pounds or 6,800 kilograms along with similarly rated lifting chains or straps to place the parts of the track press. A welder, preferably metal inert gas and handheld grinder with a steel grinding wheel to assemble the conveyor and optional pad lift system. A hammer drill with masonry bits to match the masonry anchors. Four large masonry anchors up to 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeters in diameter to anchor the track press. 22 small masonry anchors up to 1 half inch or 13 millimeters in diameter to anchor the index table and conveyor system. Pour in studs can be used if the track press is installed in a new facility. Steel shims or millwright grout used to level uneven areas under the conveyor system. 150 gallons or 570 liters of hydraulic fluid. The recommended hydraulic fluid has a viscosity of ISO 32 or an SSU of from 100 to 200. The fluid should be rated for pressures up to 6,000 PSI or 375 bar and include anti-wear additives suitable for hydraulic pumps. The following hand tools are also needed for the installation. A set of inch series or imperial wrenches through 1 and 1 8 inch. A set of inch series sockets with a ratchet wrench and extension bars. A set of inch series hex keys, also called Allen wrenches, through 3 quarters of an inch. A large adjustable wrench or pipe wrench with an opening of 3 and 3 quarter inches or 95 millimeters. A selection of pry bars and tapered aligning bars or drifts. A slotted blade screwdriver with a 1 8 inch to 3 16 inch or 3 mm to 5 mm wide tip. A cross point or Phillips screwdriver with a number 1 tip. Locate the main part of the track press on the prepared floor and attach it to the floor with 4 anchors or studs up to 3 quarter inch or 19 mm in diameter. Cut all the shipping bands from the track press and uncoil the hydraulic hoses and electrical conduits. Go to the back of the track press and remove the two bolts from the indexer brackets. Lift the indexer, move it into position at the back of the track press and bolt it to the track press. Secure the back of the indexer to the floor with two masonry anchors or studs up to 1 half inch or 13 millimeters in diameter. Find the indexer hydraulic hoses coming from the track press, pass them through the rings at the side of the indexer, 
connect two of the hoses to the hydraulic motor at the back of the indexer. Also find the indexer limit switch and bolt this to the bracket under the right front of the indexer's table. Attach a lifting device to the center table of the indexer and raise the table. Remove the pin from the top clevis on the indexer lift cylinder. Focus on the lift bar under the indexer table. Lower the table until the hole in it lines up with the hole in the clevis. Insert the pin and lock it with the cotter pin. Next, unpack the hydraulic power unit. Move the power unit in next to the right of the indexer, viewed from the front of the track press, with the main electric motor facing towards the indexer. Position it so the left edge of the power unit is about 8 inches or 20 centimeters to the right of the indexer and the front edge is about 53 inches 135 centimeters behind the back edge of the track press. Connect the hydraulic hoses from the track press matching them with the markings on the power unit fittings. Also uncoil the three small hydraulic hoses on the power unit and pass them under the right side of the track press. These are connected to the control console later in the installation. Also connect the electrical conduit from the track press to the disconnect enclosure at the back of the power unit, matching the wires to the terminal strip inside the enclosure. Unpack the control console and place it in front of the track press at the right side. Connect the seven small hydraulic hoses from the track press and hydraulic power unit to the bulkhead at the back of the control console, matching the hoses to the fitting tags. Also connect the electrical conduit from the track press to the back of the electrical enclosure on the control console. Match the wires in the conduit to the terminal blocks inside the enclosure. Please note, the conveyor system and pad lift system parts are stamped with numbers to show their locations. See the accompanying floor plan drawing for details. If the optional pad lift system is included, Loosely assemble the conveyor system parts and only tighten the connections after the pad lift system has been tested. Unpack the conveyor system parts and for the pad lift system if it is included. Begin by positioning the center legs and lift legs using the locations shown on the floor plan drawing. Turn all the lift legs so the manifold support angles are on the left side as viewed from the front of the track press. If the track press does not have a pad lift system, install masonry anchors on all of the legs. One at a time, lift the roller conveyors and place them on the legs, matching the stamped numbers. The first roller conveyor overlaps the back of the index table by 12 inches or 30 centimeters. Bolt the roller conveyors to the legs using the supplied 7 16 inch dash 14 by one and a half inch bolts. 7 16 inch flat washers and 7 16 14 nylon lock nuts. If the optional pad lift system is included, don't tighten the bolts until the pad lift system is tested. Again following the stamp numbers, place the outer rail channels on the legs and lock them in place with the 3 8 inch dash 16 by 3 quarter inch bolts. Don't tighten the bolts yet if the track press includes the pad lift system. Next, install the track chute to the last roller conveyor using the axle shaft and collar clamps shipped with the track chute. Recheck that all the hydraulic connections are tight. At the hydraulic power unit, find the two shutoff valves and open them both. Open the top of the reservoir and add hydraulic fluid to the top of the site gauge, about 100 gallons or 380 liters. Check for any hydraulic leaks and retighten the fittings if needed. Be sure to check that the unit is wired for your local wattage, shown on the electrical tag on the disconnect enclosure at the back of the power unit. If the electrical tag does not match the supply voltage, contact WTC Machinery for assistance. Connect the three-phase electrical supply to the disconnect switch following all national and local electrical codes. With electrical connections complete, check that the motor rotates the correct direction. Turn on the power to the track press and then turn on the disconnect switch. Remove the coupling cover at the front end of the main motor and position a helper to watch the coupling turn. Briefly run the electric motor by pressing the start push button and then the stop push button at the control console. The motor should rotate in the direction shown by the arrow next to the coupling. If not, turn off all power to the track press 
and exchange any two of the three leads to the disconnect switch. Reconnect the power to the track press and retest the motor's rotation. When done, put the motor coupling cover back in place. With the electrical connection complete, jog the motor on and off several times and then run the motor for several minutes to filter the hydraulic fluid. Run the indexer chain dry for one full revolution of the chain, about a minute, by moving the index table joystick to the indexer forward position. Then run the indexer in the reverse direction one full revolution, again about a minute, by moving the joystick to the indexer reverse position. Also raise and lower the index table several times, moving the joystick between the index lift up and down index lift positions. Next, using the main ram handles at the control console, extend and retract each of the main cylinders several times, and then retract them past the midpoint of the stroke. One at a time, loosen and then retighten the bleed ports at the top of the cylinders to vent air. Continue cycling and venting the cylinders until all of the air is removed. Fully retract both main cylinders and then raise and lower the track clamp several times by pressing the clamp up and clamp down buttons on the control console. Remove one of the collar clamps from the indexer's arm shaft and pull the shaft part way out of the table. Find the two indexer guide arms shift with the track press and install them on the shaft with the cutouts facing away from each other. Push the shaft back through the table and lock it with the collar clamp. A stop block is also shipped with the track press. This is used whenever 91 series 8 bolt saddles are mounted in the press. The stop block bolts to the front of the indexer frame. Finally, if a torque wrench or impact wrench is used with the track press, lift it onto the conveyor system's outer rails and adjust the wrench's carriage wheels to fit tightly on the outer rails. Move the wrench along the length of the outer rails and grind back any areas on the rails where the wrench binds. This section of the video manual covers using the WTC385 track press. We'll begin with the controls for the press. At the control console, the start and stop buttons control the two pumps and enable all the other controls, except for the work lights. The main ram joysticks extend and retract the main rams. The joystick for the left main ram is the one closer to the track press. As shipped, the main rams move the same direction as the joysticks. Pushing the left ram joystick extends the left ram, and pushing the right ram joystick retracts the right ram. The indexer joystick raises and lowers the indexer table and moves the track chain towards and away from the track press. Note that both main rams have to be fully retracted to raise the indexer table. The clamp up and clamp down buttons raise and lower the track clamp. The work lamp switch turns the work lights on and off. The remote control switch turns on the power to the wireless remote, which controls the winch and the optional pad lift system. To prevent accidentally operating the remote, it's a good practice to leave the remote control switch off except when using the winch or pad lift system. Finally, there's the set pressure button. Use this along with the pressure control and gauge at the right of the control console to set the pressing force of the main rams. The winch and optional pad lift system are controlled with a wireless remote. This allows you to follow the end of the winch cable and have a good view of the pad lift system as it raises and lowers. To use the remote, turn on the remote control switch at the control console and then press the start on button. The west and east buttons control the cable winch. The stop button turns the remote off. The winch is at the back of the track press above the indexer. Push in on the locking tab at the side of the winch to turn the engage handle. Turn it down to engage the winch for pulling and up to disengage for pulling out the cable. There's a hook above the winch to hold the cable end when not in use. To load a track chain onto the WTC385, bring the track chain in line with the conveyor system. With track pads facing up and the bushing end of the track closest to the track press. Next, choose the right sized indexer pawls for the track chain. Use the two short pawls for small track chains, usually chains with a pitch under 8 inches or 200 millimeters, 
and use the two large pawls for bigger track chains. The pawls bolt to the chain that runs down the middle of the indexer table. Use a 3 8 inch hex key wrench to tighten the bolts. Once the correct pawls are installed, start the track press and use the indexer joystick to move the upper pawl to the front of the indexer. This makes room to pull the track chain onto the indexer table. Disengage the winch and pull out the winch cable to reach the track chain. Pass the cable under the first three or four bushings and then pin the cable to the track chain with a heavy bar. Engage the winch by pressing in on the locking tab and turning the winch's handle down. Start the press and make sure the remote control switch is on. Find one of the wireless remotes, press the Start On button to enable it, and then press and hold the West button to pull the track chain onto the conveyor system. Continue pulling the track chain until the front end is even with the cable guide, and then release the East button. Briefly press the West button to slack the cable and unpin it from the track chain. Press the East button again to coil the remaining cable back onto the winch until the end is hooked, and then disengage the winch. Before servicing a track chain, make sure you have the correct tools in good condition, free of mushrooming, chips, and cracks. See the tooling charts or contact WTC for help selecting the right tooling for a particular make and model of track chain. To disassemble the track chain, you will need two pin disassembly tools and two bushing disassembly tools, along with the related tool holders and backing bars. You'll also need a saddle, also called a jaw. Small track chains use two split jaws. These adjust to cover a range of track pitches, while large track uses a single fixed pitch saddle. Depending on the type of saddle, you might also need a saddle adapter plate. Please see the tooling charts for details. Torque the saddle bolts to 1,000 plus or minus 100 foot-pounds or 1,356 plus or minus 135 newton meters before using the saddle. The tools to reassemble the track chain are much the same. You will need two pin assembly tools and two bushing assembly tools along with tool holders and backing bars and a single fixed pitch jaw or two split jaws. Some models of track use retaining rings to hold the pins onto the links and special tools are used to install these rings. To install the saddle, move the indexer's guide arms out of the way. Use an impact wrench to tighten the saddle bolts and then slide the guide arms back so they just clear the upright part of the saddle. Back on the right side of the indexer, adjust the full up limit stop so the guide arms clear the top of the saddle when the indexer table is completely raised. With the indexer adjusted, finish loading the track chain. Raise the indexer table. Remember that both main rams need to be fully back to do this. Bring the track chain forward until the front bushing is over the front saddle pocket and then lower the indexer table. Slowly advance the left and right rams until the tooling almost touches the track chain and make final adjustments to the tooling so that it lines up with the pin and bushing on the track chain. Once the tooling is aligned, disassemble the track chain. A few notes on disassembly. Always close the safety door when disassembling or assembling track. This lets the WTC 385 develop full pressing force and protects you from flying debris. Lower the track clamp to hold the track in the saddle. This helps hold the track in the saddle while pressing. For large track chains with a pitch over 11 inches or 280 millimeter, use the center saddle pocket and the center tool mount position to press off the split links. This keeps the pressing force centered, extending the life of the track press. Some tracks have a recessed master bushing, shorter than that of standard bushings. Use the master bushing adapters to press the front links on this track. The indexer won't be able to move the last part of the track chain. Pull this ahead by hand. To press the track chain back together, remove the disassembly tooling and install the assembly tools. See the tooling charts for details. Generally, the assembly tools have the same alignment as the disassembly tools, but worn track chain bushings sit higher in the saddle pockets when turned over, so always check the alignment of the assembly tools before using them. Once the tooling is installed and aligned, set the pressing force. 
Press and hold the Set Pressure button and turn the Remote Pressure Control to set the correct force. Use the recommended pressing force to assemble the track. Extra force can damage the pins, bushings and seals, misalign the links and shorten the tooling life. This section of the video manual covers maintenance of the WTC 385 track press. It's important to keep the hydraulic system clean. Dirt causes serious and expensive damage to hydraulic equipment. Change the track press's filters regularly. A good plan is to schedule a filter change once every six months. The hydraulic power unit has three filters. The return filter, which uses a spin-on element, the large pressure filter, which uses a replacement element, and the small pressure filter, which uses a replacement element. Change filter when gauge goes to red on return filter or pop up on main pressure pops on main pressure. If you change one filter, then change all three. Please refer to your owner's manual for filter part numbers. It's also a good practice to check the quality of the hydraulic fluid regularly, usually with every filter change. Always replace the fluid if it shows signs of dirt, moisture, discoloration, or additive breakdown. Change hydraulic oil as needed. Clean around the reservoir's cover and then open it. Use a work light to inspect inside the reservoir. Clean any dirt or debris from the bottom of the reservoir. Always check the suction strainers and return diffuser for dirt, tears, or holes. Clean them if they are dirty or replace them if damaged. After cleaning, replace the drain plug, strainers, diffuser, and filters. Close the reservoir's cover and fill the reservoir with fresh hydraulic fluid to the top of the sight gauge. Please refer to the owner's manual for part numbers. Regularly check for leaks around the hydraulic fittings, hoses, valves, pumps, motors, and cylinders. Tighten loose fittings and replace or service any damaged parts. Also check the hydraulic hoses for kinks, frays, or cracks and replace them if damaged. Before every use, inspect the saddle bolts for bending, cracks, or damaged threads and replace if needed. Once every week, inspect the winch cable for kinks or fraying and replace it if damaged. Every day, top off the four oil cups with a light motor oil, for example, SAE 30 weight oil. Every six months, check the adjustment on the main ram slide bearings. There are eight bearings, one each at the front and back of each main ram and two on top of each main ram. All eight bearings are tightened the same way. Loosen all four of the keeper bolts and starting in the center, tighten all four jack screws to about 50 foot-pounds or 68 newton meters then retighten all four keeper bolts to about 50 foot-pounds 68 newton meters again starting in the center Thank you for choosing WTC Machinery. We appreciate your business.